After creation of the fistula, the patient comes back in four to six weeks to assess for fistula maturity and check for any stenosis or narrowing. We will start with maturation now and then discuss stenosis later in this MedMaster course. Assessment begins with a deep vein thrombosis or DVT protocol to make sure that blood flow from the fistula has a clear path back to the heart. This is the same DVT protocol that we learned about earlier. Next, waveforms are obtained from the inflow artery, so either the brachial or the radial artery, approximately two centimeters proximal to the anastomosis. Remember that if the fistula is patent, the inflow artery waveforms will be low resistance, meaning there is flow during diastole. Now that there is a fistulous connection, the outflow artery, so either the brachial, or the radial artery distal to the anastomosis is evaluated for steel. Recall that blood flow in a normal outflow artery moves toward the hand, which is known as antegrade flow. If the flow is moving proximally toward the fistula instead of toward the hand, known as a retrograde flow, then this constitutes a steel. For a radiocephalic fistula, you know from your preoperative pulmonary arch test that if there is a steel in the radial artery, then the ulnar artery will be able to take over supply to the hand. This means that sometimes steel in the radial artery is asymptomatic. However, for a brachiocephalic fistula, if there is steel in the brachial artery, that often causes hand pain and ischemia because no blood will reach either the radial or ulnar arteries. We will discuss steel ultrasound findings more in the interpretation lesson. Next, you should evaluate the outflow vein using 2D to obtain the diameter and depth, as well as Doppler waveforms to obtain velocity measurements. This image of a brachiocephalic fistula shows the four locations you should take measurements of the cephalic outflow vein. These are at the anastomosis, at the proximal point, which is in the distal upper arm, the midpoint, and then the distal point, which is in the proximal upper arm. For brachiobacillic fistulas, the locations of the basilic outflow vein measurements are at the same points in the upper arm. However, for radiocephalic fistulas, after the anastomosis measurement, the proximal, mid, and distal cephalic outflow vein locations vary between different labs. Some use the whole arm, and others just the forearm. Lastly, use the Doppler waveforms to measure volume flow in the mid outflow vein. This image shows volume flow displayed for a brachiocephalic fistula. You will recall that volume flow is a measurement of the amount of blood flowing through the fistula per minute. This measurement predicts the adequacy of blood flow through the fistula to the heart and is useful in determining fistula maturation and function. We will discuss normal parameters in Chapter 3 of this Med Mastery course. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MedMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MedMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.